Oh no. Oh no. Toronto. Maple leaves. Oh no. Is that seven years in a row? Out first round? And this time you lose to your rivals. Montreal Canadiens. Up 3-1 in the series. Lot Hey, after game four, lots of shit talk. There was lots of shit talk. Which is fine. Shit talk's fun. After game five, eh, still shit talk. After game six, ooh, ooh, it went from shit talk to, oh, they'll they'll win. I think they'll win. After game seven, <sighs> quiet at first, and then an explosion, an explosion, fucking trade Marner. Fucking trade Nylander. Fucking fire Dubis. Fire Keith. <laughs> oh, I knew. I knew if Montreal came back in the series and won, the memes were going to be golden. And that the Toronto fans would have an absolute meltdown. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Game five and six overtime. How exciting, dude. I was nervous. Both those games. <laughs> All the games. I was nervous. Especially game seven. Nervous the entire game. But I was probably nervous the entire game until they scored the empty netter. Then I eased back. Like, holy fuck, they did it. Holy fuck, they did it. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of blame going around. Um, Mitch Marner sucks is the one that I hear the most and that they, he needs to be traded. And um, here's here's my uh, unprofessional opinion. Matthews, Marner, and Nylander are all good players. Marner has proven that he can put up 100 points in a season. You don't just, like, get those players. You can't just go get those players whenever you want. It's like, yeah, we'll just we'll trade Marner for like uh, Eichel. <sighs> I don't. A hundred point players do not come around that often. I would be very, uh, very diligent, very thorough in your uh, in your research to to trade this young man. If I was Toronto, I would just I would just keep it the same. Like you have good players, you just need you just need some like better luck to break through. And this is like it's not just the Leafs. Like this is this happens all the time in the NHL where a team's like, "Oh, this team's good, but they always lose first or second round of playoffs." It happens all the time in hockey. But because it's the Leafs, it's fucking Holy fuck. Armageddon. Um, but Montreal moves on to the second round. Winnipeg. Who knows? Who knows what can happen? Gary Price is playing out of his mind. Um, and like Montreal has more firepower than they've had in like in a very long time. So they definitely have a chance. They have a chance if they can do the same thing that they did to Matthews and Marner and shut down like Shifley and uh, Connor and those guys, they got a shot. They definitely got a shot. Maybe, many, maybe Winnipeg goes back to playing like they were before the playoffs, which was trash. The scary thing is though, if they can manage to get past Winnipeg, um, you gotta face. Colorado I don't see Vegas winning this series after the 7-1 to beatdown Vegas is absolutely loaded 
they're like they're Stanley Cup or nothing, and they got toyed with by Colorado in that first game. Colorado was scoring with ease. Um, so if you can get past Winnipeg, may, hey, a showing in the conference final is nothing to be ashamed about. Getting swept in the conference final is even fine. Uh, you're just not quite on the Colorado level. But hey, I guess anything can happen. I guess anything can happen. People are saying, oh, no way Montreal can beat Toronto. They're going to lose in five. Well, hey, 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 look what happened. So, I think, yeah, that game one goes tomorrow. And, like, why why does the North Division have to do back-to-backs in the playoffs? So they play Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, then Monday. Why? Why is the North Division getting fucked by that? Back-to-back in the playoffs? That's brutal, dude. And it's Montreal's home games. I don't know. I don't know why, like, he can't just wait one day, dude. He can't just push it back one day. They're on that strict schedule in the NHL. Strict. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Winnipeg's letting 500 people in the stadium, I think. Um, Toronto let in 500, it was like 500, 550 people, uh, last night, but it was, it wasn't very noticeable. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like when Montreal had 2,500 people in their game, like that was noticeable. They were saying shit and booing and singing 500. I don't know. It's just, it's like, it's just not a, not a difference maker. And, um, I thought I heard someone say on Monday, so that would be game four, Quebec's opening up even more. They're going to like a new zone, so they might even have more people there for that game, which is sick. That's such a boost for Montreal. That game six with the fans, first time there was fans in the stadium like in any um, Canadian team since the, uh, the old pandy. Holy fuck. It was electric. Um, speaking of the pandy, got my, uh, got my first shot last week. Um, needles have never really, like, I've never, never had an issue with needles. This one, my arm, my arm wasn't even sore. It was just kind of, like, noticeable for a day. And then it was gone. I think that where I got the shots bruised, it might, is it still? It doesn't look like it. Um, but, uh, I went to St. Thomas because I was able to get the, the appointment faster there. Um, the arena in St. Thomas, fucking do something about your parking lot. I almost rolled my ankle walking into the building. It's like a, it's just a gravel, not gravel, like a dirt. It's a dirt parking lot with just rocks randomly scattered so I'm walking inside and I step on this big rock freaking hire some 16 year old to go pick up rocks god damn imagine walking in you're like oh fuck yeah finally I'm getting my vaccine I made it all the way through COVID I'm getting the vaccine fuck yeah and you roll your ankle or break your ankle stepping on a rock in the parking lot, you're fucked. You're lying there. Unless you can crawl inside, that'd be respectable, but no one's helping you. Like, oof. Yeah, so it's like a pretty strict appointment schedule they got going here. Like, I need to be on time. It's very important to be on time. I can't stop and help you. So there's just like waves of people walking by you, like looking down on you like, ooh, that sucks, but I can't do anything about it. So that would that's not something you want. Get somebody out there to pick up the frickin' rocks. I don't even know where they like where do these rocks come from? If it's just it's just a dirt parking lot with random rocks scattered. Have those rocks been there since you made the parking lot? 
Are rocks just chilling in the ground? I don't know, these things. Big rocks, sure, huge rocks, but like little tiny like baseball rocks? The fuck? Um, also, when you're inside getting your shot, there's like, um, it was like a rose on the ice. Not the actual, no, it wasn't actually ice, but you know what I mean. But up in the, like, the rafters area, there was this girl, like, with three computers in front of her just lurking. I was looking up at this lady, like, what, what is she doing up there? What is she looking at? Like, she's just looking at three computers just lurking. Is she scheduler? Is she making sure they have um, uh, enough vaccines for the day? Is she writing down uh, stats? I don't know. But it was kind of creepy. Was also uh, able to hang out with some friends last week. Um, where a couple of my friends live out. It's called. Wait, is it called? It's called Plymouth, Plymouth, Wyoming, USA. No, no, not the USA. Sarnia, I think. I think it's outside of Sarnia. It's like a freaking hour drive, but um, worth, dude. They've got a nice spot. They got a nice big ass yard. Went over there for a fire slash rage. I think um. I think it was like you can have five people hanging outside. Was there five people there? Maybe. But uh, it was a lot of fun, dude. That was the first time like <clears throat> since I went to the, this cottage last year. Maybe, I think that was the last time. Saw a bunch of my friends. Fucking sick, dude. It was sick. Brought over cornhole. Cornhole made its first debut. I got this set on Amazon. But I'm always going to tell people that I made it, even though it says Amazon right on it. I'm always going to say that I made it. Um, brought that out, playing. The banter was lit. What else was lit? Big ass fire. <clears throat> we were throwing just skids, full skids in this fire. And it was kind of like cold outside. It was actually pretty cold outside. But if you, there was this zone where this like four foot five foot radius diameter around the fire where it was hot as fuck this was a big fire we're throwing full skids in this bitch but then as soon as you step out of that radius freezing cold freezing cold you need a sweater you step inside hot as fuck so like you you're stepping in and out of that your body's like what's going on here where are we what the fuck's going on so stood out there for a while and then it turned into like a mini it was kind of like a dj uh uh hangout inside just playing hit after hit after hit a little bit of a dance party um was getting pretty so getting pretty saucy outside just having like uh american vintages but then once we got inside it was shot status and once the shot shot started pouring it's like I'm so ex I'm so excited I'm so stoked I can't say no. So things got silly really quick. Uh, what was it? I think I had Top Shelf Mint. It was pretty good. It's like the Top Shelf Mint is one of those shots where um, it's like twenty five percent, twenty percent, twenty five percent. So it's like it tastes good, um, but. You think, oh, it's only 20%. It's not. That's fine. But, like, hey, they'll get you. They still sneak up on you. Those those shots can be dangerous in that way. Like, they taste good because it's only... It's a lower percent, but, like, it's still fucking booze. So, those will get you. People were bringing out um, other stuff. I think there was some Long Island iced teas going on. Lots of fun. Um, thankfully, um, my buddy who was driving me home because I was um, inebriated as hell and just generally dumb. I left my chair outside. I left my cornhole set outside. 
He packed it up for me. Great guy. Real good guy. Took me home. When I got home, took me about five minutes to figure out how the fucking alarm works. I'm standing there clicking buttons like, why isn't this working? Because I forgot that if you set off the alarm, you have to hit the code twice for it to reset. So I hit it once and on them and then I'm trying to like turn it back on, but it was still it was still just going off. I'm like, fuck sakes. Fucking drunk. <clears throat> and then one thing that I something that I I find that I do um when I like if I'm go somewhere and get drunk and then come home, I uh <clears throat> I lay lay in bed with my headphones almost blaring. Just listening to all kinds of different music, synth, rap, orchestra, some rock, I guess. I think I played, um, To Whom the Bell Tolls, blaring it, just, just rocking out, not ready, I wasn't ready to go to bed, wasn't ready, but, uh, then I end up sleeping like 12 hours, so I probably was, probably was ready to go to bed. But, um, uh, it was fun, dude. Last week, it was a lot of fun. And that's just, that's just what's going to be coming these days. Um, I don't know if it's this week or next week. I think there, there's like a, an update on stuff opening up and shit. So very good, dude. This is very, very good. Um, oh yeah. Another thing I noticed when, um, when I was watching the game last night, I saw a commercial for this movie. <laughs> it was like, let's see, The Conjuring 12? The Conjuring 12, maybe. Let's see. Let's look it up. The Conjuring <laughs> The Conjuring, the devil made me do it. <laughs> Running out of ideas. <laughs> Dude, how many Conjuring movies are there? And it's, it's like, this cast, they're milking it. They love it. They get the call from their agent. Hey, hey, they want to do another Conjuring. They're just like, fuck yeah, payday. Uh, Would Wikipedia... Oh, it's only the third one. The fuck? Still, dude, still. These people and um, these actors that are in it, this girl and this guy, they are... Why can't I look at the cast? Anyway. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Figure out a different name. <laughs> That's such a lazy name. Um... Oh, wait, maybe I'm stupid. It's not that girl. I thought she was in all that shit. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the girl from, uh, fuck, what's that movie? The grandma and the kid chop off their head. And they're, like, cold. Fuck, I forget what it's called. God damn it. Anyway, she was in Knives Out. Let's see. She's got blonde hair. She looked extremely tan and knives out. I don't know if it was like the 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 cameras and shit or the the colors they were using, but she was extremely tan. Tawny Colette. Yeah, this girl. What was that movie? Oh yeah, Hereditary. Actually terrifying. I fucking hate scary movies. Um, but we watched this at work, so. It was okay, I guess. But this other guy, Patrick Wilson, he's always in these scary movies. I'm pretty sure he did the one with the Darth Maul-looking guy. Yep. Good for him. This other girl, Vera from Vera Farmiga. Oh, she, yeah, she's a girl from Base Motel. So she's and she was in the Nun. <laughs> Dude, she's all about the scary shit. So does this girl have like? If all you're doing all these kinds of scary movies, are you just a psychopath or do you have nightmares every night? Cause that shit's gotta be in your head. That shit has to be in your head. 
all the time. If you're able to just shut it off, let's just work. Psycho. Orphan, I'm pretty sure that was a scary movie. Anna, Annabelle. Conjuring. I think Annabelle was like a slide, a, a slide show. Oh, Boy in Striped Pajamas. That was a sad as fuck movie. She was in that too. God damn. What? Why? Try and do a fun like. Why can't they get this girl in a comedy? Call up your agent and be like, hey, can you get me in a in a comedy or like a, a feel good movie? I'm doing all this scary shit. Um. But those the scary movies that are like um more thrilling, those are way more scarier than the fucking monster scary movies. The monster scary movies uh, are fucking dumb. If you like scary movies that it's just a monster and it's not like a it's not like a Freddy or Jason slasher thing, you don't have a single thought in your brain. Oh ah oh they're so exciting, they're so fun. Do something else. Um. Yeah, I, I like I saw this commercial for the devil made me do it, and I fucking cackled. I think like are they? They're just part of the gag now. They're like, the Conjuring, the, the Conjuring Four, the Conjurer. <laughs> Uh, or actually, if you just called it Conjuring Three, it'd be better than this stupid name. <laughs> oh man, this is good stuff. But um, what I was saying about the the you don't have a single thought in your brain of the monster movies. I haven't watched any of these movies, <laughs> so I don't actually know what I'm talking about I just I just I don't get the uh, it's just not my thing like I guess I guess it could be fun you know, watch it with some watch it with some friends but just not not into it rather watch something else and plus it's not just that I think it's stupid. It's that like I'll watch those movies and then I think about those movies. And I don't want to think about those movies. You know what I mean? I don't want to think about some fucked up shit for the next couple weeks. Don't want to. And it always, that, it always sneaks up on you. Like you'll be uh, like going for a piss in the middle of the night or like something like that. And like. Like the images from the movie will just like shoot into your brain. Like, hey, 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 hey. Your brain would be like, oh, dude, dude. What if, uh, what if that thing's just like in the shower? And you're like, ah, oh, fuck off. Really? You gotta do that shit to me? Or like you're walking in down the hall and it's like, is it behind me? Is this fictional creature that doesn't exist behind me? Is it possible? It's definitely possible. I mean that. It's definitely possible. So. I don't like that shit, dude. I don't like thinking about, uh... Scary stuff. Not... Not thrilling. But... When I watched that Hereditary movie at work with the work... The work bros... It was... Exciting. Kind of. Eh. Eh. I'm not gonna say Exciting. It was like, oh, shit, kind of stuff. Like, oh, fuck, like that. <clears throat> but um, two weeks from now when Fast 9 comes out, I'll be watching that shit. I'll be all over that shit. Uh, the thing about the Fast, the Fast and Furious series is that it's original, realistic, great acting, Great writing, great camera work, all the stunts are real. Um, a lot of the characters are real. Uh, the characters are immortal. Uh, 
John Cena is in this new one. So I'm fully expecting him to give somebody the FU. His finisher from back in the day. Because in Fast 7? In Fast 7, in the third movie The Rock was in, they finally got him to do The Rock Bottom. He rock bottomed Jason Statham through a glass um, table. Moments after that, Jason Statham shot The Rock and that lady out the window. It was only like 20 stories high with a grenade. And then The Rock with his gigantic body made of uh, gold fell onto the car and they survived they survived this they were fine they're completely fine these people are in great shape the rock works out twice a day every day he eats very well and when you do those kinds of things you can survive falls from a story 20 story building from a grenade blast and that's that's what i like about the fast and fair series very realistic um it should be a non-fiction series actually um, but I'm, I'm I want John Cena to uh, maybe give Vin Diesel the FU, like off a bridge onto his own moving car. So I'm excited for that. Probably gonna be the best movie of the year. Probably gonna be the most serious, um, thought-provoking movie uh, since the pandemic started. Really, so stoked. <laughs>